Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about software developers. So let's get into it. So the question of question was, Frederick, huh, are there too many software engineers? Nope. Uh, there are not enough software engineers uh, for the jobs that we need, but there's too many bad uh, software engineers. There's a lot of those. Like, uh, and a hilarious amount, honestly. Uh, there are so many bad software de developers, in fact, that the recruitment process is uh, clogged up, basically. I would say that I've done a few hundred now, I think, over the course of my career. Uh, interviews because I'm usually involved in the interviewing processes and so forth and on average I would say maybe one out of five one out of ten ish code tests even the simplest one the same test we give junior level developers all the way up to senior level developers is like passable where it's not like completely broken or something like that in many cases uh, you sort of have to get things to the personal interviewing stage fairly quickly because uh, it's very difficult from just a code test to tell if somebody is good or bad so I don't try to I, I go a little bit in a different direction with these sorts of things than most of my like some of my other co-workers and I think that they've started to understand the logic I use where uh, the the idea that you can tell that someone is good or bad based on how they wrote their code really comes down to how well do you know the reasons behind somebody doing something within the code. An example would be if somebody uses a for loop or for each, is that a good or bad coder? If you write unit tests or not, is that a good or bad coder? Well, it very much depends on what the expectations of the person is when they're writing the software. If you have a very complicated technical problem uh, and you don't write any unit tests, that might be an indicator that you're not very good at solving complicated technical problems. But in, say, front-end LAN, when you might be primarily making an SBA or like you're doing a code test like that, it's actually very rare that the front-end developers think about unit testing even though you in the company might care about it so the question is should you draw the line with at uh, well this person didn't write unit tests well if you did that then you would have to basically never hire anyone in the front-end space even the ones who are really really good because there's a lot of software developers who in a, co in a testing scenario might not even think about it because unit testing, is, which is the un inconvenient truth, is not something that tells you whether or not someone is good or bad. I know that a lot of managers think that way. I talk to them myself and try to explain to them that even, uh, myself, like when I did the code test in a specific company, I didn't write any unit test for the front-end code. My motivation was very simple because it was a trivial problem and it's never going to be used by anybody else. So this is like a one five. I'm literally this is a throwaway product that's going to be thrown away in five minutes. Why would I put the energy of writing unit tests into something that I can't get wrong, practically, and it's never going to be maintained? And so they started. I hope at the very least see my point. Where if you s draw the line with you have unit tests, then you don't truly understand what makes a software developer good, because you pick this arbitrary reason. On the other hand, if you see someone who is supposed to write things in, say, TypeScript, and they don't write things in TypeScript, they write them in JavaScript, or they copy-paste in code, and like uh, things like that, then that is a different matter, because that is not that, that that's not something that someone you can, that where it's not, it's not a discussion of did you do this for a good reason or not. There's no good reason to do it. It's more an indicator of that. Okay, you have a limitation of skill that might be a concern to us but many cases it's almost impossible to say that so usually you get to the interviewing stage and in the interviewing stage I usually do the same thing every time I don't check the person's CV I never check the CV 
practically. The reason being because the CV is irrelevant to me because I am a professional grade software developer. I've done this for years and I know what another professional grade software developer sounds like. I know how to ask them questions that I know that the only way they can answer this in a satisfying way is if they've done the work. It's very simple. An example would be if I ask you what types of C like, let's just take a simple one CSS architectures or C different ways of working with CSS that different uh, less SAS post CSS CSS in JS CSS modules etc etc could you tell me a little bit about the patterns that you have used and pros and cons with different approaches under circum under different circumstances try to swing that if you've never worked with CSS or try to swing that if you are a poser who think who like you just work you know you took a boot camp and you know how to use exactly one method of doing this because there is many pros and cons with different approaches and if you don't know the different ways then that's okay because I can put you on a gauge if you give me a satisfying answer to that question that basically means if you can cover all the different ways and like sort of give me concrete examples of in what circumstances you've used one approach over another and your reasoning behind that that tells me that you are very good because it takes years and years and many different projects and different circumstances to get that sort of knowledge guys I've worked with people who have worked for 20 years who do not have the capacity to answer that question because all they have ever done is work on very specific stacks or so forth and so forth and so that is in my opinion a much more fair way of assessing someone but most people do not have the ability to uh, actually to to answer question in that uh, questions at that level you don't have to be at that level of course but like uh, in on average guys most software developers are not capable of doing much more than the basics of the basics in many cases they don't even know the answers to simple questions like can you explain to me what a if we talk javascript now what is a promise they don't know like they can sort of sort of explain it like sort of you know this is sort of this way it works and etc etc but they don't really know and so it's very difficult uh, to find someone who has like real real mastership the thing that is in such scarcity that it's basically impossible to find is what I call the true senior the true senior it's actually funny yesterday I got a request for that uh, my product owner came to me because he, uh, I've told him that uh, he's gonna have to look for a replacement uh, for my sort of profile within the company and so I ex and he said that but we won't be able to do that and I said no it's gonna be very difficult but I can give you a few candidates who are going to be able to fit the role and he said but what, 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 okay what, what do we need like what type of person will we need in order to replace uh, like to like take over like sort of scale out the sort of work that I'm usually tasked to do uh, with doing well I explained to him that you're going to need not what we call a senior today because a senior quote unquote and I did a few references like we have seniors in the company and as you probably have noticed most of these so-called seniors you can't ask them to take a project on and just say hey guys we have this big problem we don't really know how to fix it can you go and solve it because what they call a senior in the industry is usually someone who just knows the stack well enough to not produce bugs but if you ask this person can you make sure that we have a delivery pipeline can you make sure that we have documentation for the team so we can onboard new developers can you make sure that we have like a good understanding of our ecosystem what stakeholders and what downstream and upstream systems we deal with what third party tools we have like can you set up an overall team strategy so that you know basically take charge and make sure that the knowledge they have of all their tools and all that stuff sort of scales to more people and all that stuff that is not the sort of person that people we have today we have people where I have to tell them go and do this thing very specifically and most of the time they have issues even figuring that out and we have the same amount of years same amount of years we've worked exactly the same like in some cases they've worked longer and they still haven't gotten to a point where they can do this effectively because as I like to say there's a difference between years and quality years 
And so he asked me, okay, but what, what do, do we need? You need a true senior. A true senior software developer is an individual who, as I like to say, they are an insurance policy. They are the sort of person that you hire in order to make sure that the project succeeds. It's not a person who just does the coding. It's not a person who just, you know, sits there and waits for work. Uh, that's a code monkey. And you can be a very sophisticated code monkey, but you're still a code monkey. A true senior software developer has the ability to act independently and make the right decisions on behalf of the project. That is something that a lot of people bitch and moan about being allowed to do, but very few people know how to do it. And finding such an individual is let's just say hard. In I've worked in companies guys where there it's a gigantic corporations and I can count on my five fingers how many of those people you have so called like the the people who really have the ability to not just do the work for themselves they have the ability to actually help other teams or have the ability to scale their the process and actually make sure that the entire project is a success as such a person is like it's like finding a diamond in a pile of mud because the average software developer does not possess that level of skill yet that is the level of skill that is necessary usually in order for you to be able to ship things in an effective manner so what I want you to take away from this is that we don't have too many software engineers we have too many bad software engineers usually the average software developer is a person who either doesn't know even like they know sort of what tools to use and like in many I've worked with guys I've had like horror story types of developers where I mean where they they have like 20 years or something on their CV and yet they can't explain even the bare bone basics that a bootcamp level developer should have an understanding of because they, they, they are only senior in name. And the same thing goes for juniors and mid-levels and so forth. You have people who get into this business with the mindset that, oh, this is easy money or this is sort of something that I can... It's like... Uh, it's just ridiculous. They don't understand that this is a significant investment and it requires a lot from you to get good at this stuff. And the people who are really good at this stuff, the people who really make the difference, they are in such short supply because usually the way that you get to be that good is that you really care, that you really want to learn. And like you're, you're not just interested in learning, you actually have an aptitude and you can take on responsibilities and so forth and so forth. You can scale your own process. And usually, guys, I meet these, as I call, true seniors or like true engineers or people who are really good at that stuff, the people who have the potential to not just, you know, do good work in their specific situation, but actually be able to practically guarantee the success. They have vision, they have uh, like a knack for this sort of stuff. These people, you can have a hundred, maybe 200 people in an interview and you might find one or two of those people. And as you can imagine, that's not really sustainable for an industry which now has a deficit that is counted in the millions. Have a great day.